Okay, so we're going to take a look at the flexion distraction table and some of the main components just to give you a sense of uh, what this is, how it works. With flexion distraction decompression, the patient usually lays face down. You'll see that uh, while I'm treating a patient a bit later in the segment. But the key features on this table are that it's, first of all, it's very comfortable for the patient. Uh, secondly, the doctor has a lot of mechanical advantage, uh, so it makes it a very gentle treatment uh, for the patient, actually. Uh, what I mean by that is we have, there's two pieces in the table will actually break away or move, and so we use the table to move the patient versus the patient having to move for the treatment. So it's very easy and comfortable for the patient, you can see. If I have a patient laying on this table, and as I said, you'll see it later, uh, I can very comfortably, easily move a patient that's in a lot of pain and uh, in a way that they're going to be okay with. Um, now, flexion distraction decompression primarily affects an intervertebral disc by reducing the internal pressure of a disc that's been injured. Okay, so okay. we're going to demonstrate with Jamie, she has an L4 disc herniation, um, some flexion distraction decompression treatment. Um, Jamie, what, what's your pain level today? It was about a 6 out of 10 the other day. Where, where are you today? 4 or 5 today? Okay. So I'm going to have you go ahead and lay face down on the table. Good roll, good ergonomics. Okay. So with flexion uh, distraction decompression, it's really important for the patient to be very relaxed, comfortable on the table. Uh, it's a treatment, that, it's a very gentle treatment uh, fundamentally. Um, which is somewhat different than some of the traditional chiropractic manipulations where um, we might have an audible release of the spine. Uh, Jamie, do you have any pain going down the leg today? Yes. You do? Okay, about how far down the leg is it going? Okay, so just below the sit bone? Okay. So while I'm treating you, Jamie, would you just let me know if the pain starts to increase down the leg, okay? All right, or if anything's uncomfortable. And the first step is for, like, as I said, for the patient to be really comfortable on the table. Uh, anyone who's had a disc injury knows that it's a really acute pain and just a, the slightest change in position can be very uncomfortable. Okay. So, Jamie, any increased pain in the back or the leg as I press down there? No. Good. Tender right there, Jamie? A little. A little bit? Okay. More or less here? Less. Less. Okay. So I'm going to start at L5 with Jamie. She does have an L4 disc herniation. We're going to start just below the level that's a little bit more tender. And the really nice thing about this treatment, Jamie will tell you, it just feels like a really nice, gentle stretch. Now, Jamie, are you okay with that pressure? Feels good? Okay, right. So she'll, great. And the key is I'm just stretching and opening up Jamie's L5 disc level enough that we're creating what's called a negative pressure inside the disc. And that negative pressure, as I mentioned earlier, is how we get fluid and nutrients to flow back into the disc. And that, that's fundamentally how we get a disc to rehydrate and we start the regeneration process. It's feeling good, Jamie? Yeah. Great, awesome. So now a patient that is having sciatic symptoms or pain that's radiating uh, into the buttocks or down the legs, we're typically going to use a much more gentle approach. We're going to use these longer holds of the stretch and it's, it's very subtle treatment. It's, it may even be difficult to see that there's a lot of movement of the table. But underneath my contact hand I can feel just a little bit of opening up of that disc area and that's like I said where we're getting that negative pressure and we're taking pressure off of the nerve endings around the disc. We're getting fluid and nutrients to flow into the disc. Uh, we're also realigning the joints in the sense that we're restoring motion if the joint has lost some motion adjacent to the disc.
good. So Jamie, I'm gonna move up to L4. It was a little bit more tender there. So just let me know if the pressure feels uncomfortable, okay? So we're, we're moving up to L4. L4 is the primary or the involved disc for Jamie. Um, she has more of a central to left uh, disc herniation at that level. And um, it's actually creating uh, what's called foraminal stenosis. Basically what that means is the, the disc part that's herniated is going into the space where the nerve exits out on the side of the vertebra and then forms a nerve plexus that goes down into her sciatic nerve. Okay, so by applying that gentle opening up force or decompression right at L4, we're actually opening up the space of that nerve foramen. Jamie, is that, is that comfortable pressure? It feels okay. Is it a little tender there? A little. A little bit. Okay, let me see if I can make it a more comfortable. Is that a little bit better? Yeah. Okay, great. So research on uh, flexion, distraction, decompression has actually shown that you can increase the space in that nerves, uh, nerve foramen by up to 28%, which is actually amazing when you consider uh, disc herniation can almost completely occlude that space. And so while I'm applying the pressure, we're, we're literally opening up that space for the nerve. A really big component of uh, rehabilitating the spine when you're treating a disc herniation is core strength and core stability. That's feeling okay, Jamie? Okay, great. So, Jamie, I'm gonna get into some side movements to your right. And if, if you feel any change in the symptoms going down towards the left sit bone, let me know, okay? Should just feel like a good stretch. We're just gonna open up that left side a little bit more, okay? That's okay? Great. So you can see from watching, I hope, that this is actually, it's a very specific, but a very gentle way to actually manipulate the spine as well as decompress the disc. And I think some people have apprehension about spinal manipulation, and um, I can't think of a patient that I've treated with this uh, flexion distraction that hasn't felt like it just feels good and it's a very gentle treatment. Doing okay? Yes. Okay. Now, for a patient that has uh, some radiating or sciatic pain, uh, whether it's stopping at the buttock or, or perhaps traveling into the leg, uh, oftentimes between uh, sets of decompression, we'll apply some trigger point pressure, meaning we'll go to where the sciatic nerve starts to exit the deep hip rotator muscles and we'll look for tender taut muscles. Uh, Jamie has one in the piriformis muscle right about here. And so part of the um, standardized protocol is between sets, you'll just apply gentle pressure similar to acupressure to those trigger points along the sciatic nerve. So I'm gonna do some, perform some of the now with Jamie. Pressure's okay, Jamie? Okay. And you can feel she has a little bit of a trigger point right, right here. A little sore there? Yeah. And so these three points are very commonly associated with an L4 or L5 disc herniation. Uh, and as I said, they, they, they correspond with the sciatic nerve distribution. And the, the primary contributors to the sciatic nerve come from the fourth and fifth lumbar. Okay, so Jamie, I'm gonna come back to L4. We'll do just a few more repetitions and then we're gonna get you to do some exercises for your core. And then I'd like to apply some ice and some stim, okay? And that's comfortable pressure? Yeah. Good. Now, it, a little bit of tenderness or soreness is not uncommon after a treatment. It's, it, I wouldn't say it's typical, but it, but, but it can happen. It's usually transient. They almost always perform ice, heat, and stim, and some exercise after a treatment. So I would say for the most part, people feel, uh, leave the office feeling some improvement, maybe just mild soreness, okay? And then we always 
give our patients a set of uh, decompressing exercises that, that they're working on throughout their work day, at home, at night. Uh, the goal being that we're getting repetition of taking pressure off of that disc through exercises, but then, you know, clinically through the decompression. Now that feels a bit more mobile right there. That's feeling pretty good. How's that feel, Jamie? Okay, now Jamie, just a reminder that as you get up from the table, I'd like you to activate your core and your glutes to turn on to your side, right? And just keeping a neutral spine, I just want you to pivot using your upper body to come up to a sit, okay? All right, <laughs> good. All right, okay, when you're ready, come on up and we'll head out to rehab.